with our revamped and revitalized look on how to play each of the elements in Empires of Aether, this video is going to take a look at the Blood Nation, one of the most dark and sinister approaches to the game. Your element is built on sacrificing your own units to give a permanent enhancement to your general. Your general at the end of the game is going to be a raid boss that all of your opponents will be turning their tails to, running from. With the potential of one general to stare down five or perhaps even more armies at a time if you play your cards right. Let's take a look at how the Blood Nation approaches the game. Let's take a look at all of their abilities. The Blood Nation has one of the coolest archetypes in the game, one of the coolest strategies in the game, in that you are sacrificing your own units to give a permanent buff to your general. Every soldier that you sacrifice with your abilities or slay in battle involving your general, give your general a permanent plus two buff to each of them in combat. So if you've got 50 soldiers uh, that have been sacrificed and or killed by your general, that's going to add 100 to his combat, both attacking or defending. And so you've got a lot of really, really powerful plays, swing plays where you can sacrifice a lot of soldiers in one turn to then turn the tides in a battle against your opponent and just increase his power even more so to where you are a boss monster on the board and opponents are running away from you. Their large card is what is going to be... Even his added bonuses... I don't even think are his most powerful aspect of this. Of course, it is going to be pivotal to your strategy, but their most powerful feature of their card are their castles. They are special, unique defensive fortifications for the Blood Nation in that they can only have one per tile. However, it has 20 defense instead of the normal 10, but it produces three food per turn. So I really, really like Blood in building material heavy corners. If Earth and Metal are both banned and there's multiple mountains in a corner, then Blood is a really, really solid pick. Get all of those building material tiles, pump it out those building those resources for you, put castles on each of them, and you still have a great food economy as well, so you can purchase those tiles. Additionally, every third tile you purchase gets a free castle. And then once we hit tier two, our very, very important altar tile is going to come into play, a very, very dark, sinister tile. And I love their tier ones. They're very versatile. Uh, you, you can see just really interesting cards. They are a unique experience. They're unique to play against as well. Red Shadow, named after one of our um, most, I would say, passionate players. Blue Shadow. I know. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get his, his true shadow in the game soon. But the Red Shadow has your general start at the temple, but you can't move till turn four. If he was moving tile by tile, that does put him at the temple one turn in advance. So turn four, he's moving where he should have been on turn five. So it, it is an interesting play and what this is going to be combined with is seeing red your general can move twice this turn if your opponent has overstepped his bounds in the early game well then you can pounce on them killing his soldiers or units or whatever it may be and giving your general some extra strength what i didn't mention before in the large card is that a general counts as five soldiers if your general is able to kill one that's a big deal they've gotten to the middle of the board by turn four and your general just takes them out but other very interesting points, they are an economic nation. And so if you get them at 10-10, it's not bad. I love Scarlet Fever being taken at 10-10 because you're not playing turn one, but turn two, you'll be at 23-23 because you're getting paid for your capital. You can buy all of the tiles around your capital. You can put castles on pretty much all of them, and you're set to go. I would not do this if I've got fire or lightning or glacier on my short side. Those are all really, really good matchups against me. Earth is another really, really good matchup against me, and those are all powerful nations, so it is kind of difficult there. Just watch your matchups, because really, in pretty much everything else, if I'm 10-10, I'm going first. My opponent might make a move on the short side, but I will get to answer before they can attack me, and that's really, really good here. Our other tier ones, you can't argue with them either. They're so powerful. If we're going with the super aggressive build, super food-heavy corner maybe, I can get a lot of soldiers out of the gate to fight with my general every time we win a battle, whether it's a boss or... Or an opponent, a naked tile, multiple armies present, doesn't matter. We get an advantage card. Super powerful. But more blood-themed cards here. Transfusion, we can trade any amount of food for any amount of BM. We can sacrifice soldiers to get extra resource buildings to bolster the economy. And universal recipient to get a lot of soldiers. I love all of these. And there's pretty much no combination of these abilities. I'm obviously not taking Scarlet Fever unless I'm 10-10 or 13-13. And really, 13-13, I think, is pushing it. Um, so that's kind of out, unless you're 10-10. But all of these others, I don't think there's any poor combination of these abilities. There are the more common picks. 
Seeing red is an absolute staple nowadays. Transfusion is so good for if you've got an imbalanced corner. And then whether you're going to go economic or more sacrifice heavy, Universal Donor is great. But I've seen multiple players combine any number of these abilities and do super well in the early game. But that's not even where Blood thrives. You want to set up your castles in your opening turns, get that good economy going, but you want to get to Tier 2 and Tier 3 where you're going to really excel, where there is a meta to their abilities now. So let's just move these out of the way right now. Let's take a look at Tier 2. At the Tier 2 position, you can get an Alter Tile on any of your tiles. Uh, just one. And so if you've got a Swamp or a Desert or a Forest, get it out of here. An Alter has the resource production of a Rainforest, and I can sacrifice Soldiers here at any point. I can't just sacrifice them traditionally. I have to do it at an Alter or with an ability associated here. Um, so our Tier 2s, we've got a few options here. Blood Drive is going to be, once our General is involved with 30 Soldiers Sacrificed or Killed, we automatically progress to Tier 3. That's great. If we don't think we're going to have an economic chance to really get castles on the board, occupy a few tiles, um, this is really, really solid. Personally, I'm going to go with what was their original, just absolutely crucial Tier 2 card. Just eliminate an army on a tile adjacent to your General, an enemy army. And this will contribute to his blood doping passive. So he's going to get plus five added on to that total. Excellent ability in almost every single matchup. It, you just you can't fight it. And so if you're sitting at the temple because of red shadow, or you've got your double turn, your double tile movement because of seeing red, you can jump two tiles away, sacrifice them down, exsanguinating them. Or you can move one tile, exsanguinate, and then attack them with the second tile movement. Just so many combinations, so versatile. And then bat form is pretty necessary. You have to get to 10 soldiers sacrificed and or killed. Um, this is going to allow your general to teleport from castle to castle. However, that does count for his movement. When your general is the centerpiece of your strategy, if he ever does get sent back home, you really would have no chance to get back into the game unless your general can jump back into the fray pretty quickly, so it's very necessary. The other tier twos are good. You can get some discounted soldiers on your general that can either be sacrificed or utilized to bolster your attack. You can defend your general against advantage cards, although this card isn't used too much. But their monument is amongst the best that have entered this game. Monuments are a fairly new mechanic to the game. But Blood Bank allows for bat form to not count as your general's movement. And Exsanguinate gets three uses. You get three uses of a tier two ability. How many other elements in the game would like to say the same about their movesets to get three uses of their tier two abilities? Incredibly powerful. And each of those times that you use it, you're going to get to add to your general's total. So that is excellent. And I would say these are the three standard tier twos for them at this point. Their tier three, you're going to go with their quest. Their quest is pretty easy to manage, especially if you end up fighting for Aether uh, at the temple on turn seven. Using only your general win a battle against two different players to acquire one win condition. So you can have no soldiers, no armies in addition to that. Anytime your general just fights an enemy tile by himself and he wins... This is going to count towards your win condition, but this is against two different players. So you do have to play the middle of the board a bit with this. And so there are counters to this pretty heavily. But if you're at the temple on turn seven and there's two other players fighting for it, guess what? That counts as you fighting against two different people and winning because your general is probably going to be more powerful than them. Um, but you just have to get to tier three by then. And so our other tier threes with this, it's hard to go wrong with any of them. The altar, we can train soldiers for one food. That's really, really hard to ignore because um, we can put a barracks on the altar as well. So that's 10 soldiers a turn for just a whopping 10 food. That's three castles on the board, which is going to be what you have, likely. Uh, and then channeling Dracula, we can turn a soldier into an army. That army could either be sacrificed at the altar, or we can attack. And additionally, your general can move two tiles every turn. Uh, Prince of Darkness allows your general to attack twice. So attack, win, and then attack again, which is solid great hard to argue i think you could substitute here um, because if you win a first battle against a an army with an opponent it's really hard for them to stop you because every time you win you get stronger it's not like other elements where you have to invest resources in order to win that battle no if you lose you just go back to where you were and you can try again the next turn most likely and then if you win then you just become stronger so blood is very very unique however your general is everything and so, you might find yourself waging war on one side, and the opponent on the other side uh, sees that your general is away from home and just takes you out. So you got to watch your back with the Blood Nation.